the presentation of anarchism, anarchism a social philosophy which aims at the emancipation, economic, social, political, and spiritual of the human race. The emancipation. Anarchist Essays is brought to you by Loughborough University's Anarchism Research Group. For more information on the ARG, see the link in the show notes or follow us on Twitter at ARGLBORO. Practicing Performances of Punk Anarchism in the Academy by Sarah Gelbart. I begin by acknowledging that the land where I work and live is the traditional and unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. I want to reflect on this land acknowledgement and our responsibility to think about the stories we share in this space and the stories about this space. As a white settler who is researching the violence of displacement and gentrification and other forms of urban inequity and disbelonging, I want to acknowledge that urban planning, architecture, and academic institutions have been and continue to be participant in violent systems of oppression, including settler colonialism, racial capitalism, and cis-heteropatriarchy. I am grateful for the space and time to gather and share knowledge, to build relationships that are based in trust and care for the many communities gathered here and across this virtual space. You're a bit of an anarchist, aren't you? I didn't have an answer to this question from the audience during an early presentation of my doctoral research proposal. I was reading critical urban theory and feminist theory. Was it so radical, so rebellious to begin my work from a recognition of what Oren Yiftachel calls the dark side of planning? To continue the consciousness-raising feminist work of making visible the reproduction of social and spatial injustices that are perpetuated in the name of progressive city building? Was it so strange to challenge methodological standards and research ethics in the academy? And did these things make me an anarchist? Was this question an offering to open new theoretical groundings to explore, or was it a way to dismiss the academic figure and validity of my unconventional proposal and subject? Was a presumptive association being made between anarchism and my research interest and participation in punk places, subculture, and counter-narratives? Are punks anarchists? The Sex Pistols famously wanna be anarchy. Am I a woman anarchist, like the Bad Cop Bad Cop song? Am I a modern anarchist, a punk rock existentialist, who wants to make the whole world feminist? Punk is notoriously resistant to defining what it is and who we are, more likely to declare something not punk than to identify something as punk. The resistance against punk as a definable subject, whether through its origins, demographic profiles, key events, or actors, is a resistance against predetermined, authoritative, canonical categories of belonging that would decide what punk is or was, or decide who gets to be punk or not. There is no census line, no test, no accreditation process for punk. For punks in academia and academics studying punk, we lean into and work with the messiness of the ill-defined term that frustrates our reviewers. When pushed, many turn to defining punk through punk ethos, a still messy concept that combines politics, philosophy, and practices of punk subculture. Once again, leaning on definitions of what it is not, what it is up against, 
Punk ethos is anti-authoritarian, anti-establishment, anti-oppression, anti-capitalist. Punk ethos includes practices of resistance and hegemonic struggles that reject oppressive aspects of dominant mainstream culture. From this position, punk frequently aligns with social causes and movements, including liberation movements, indigenous land back, tenant and worker unions, abolition, feminist and queer movements, animal rights and veganism. Punk often practices its anti-establishment politics through direct action grassroots and do-it-yourself or do-it-ourself approaches, where it finds common ground, solidarity, and perhaps even an identity with anarchism. But what do punk invocations of anarchism mean, and where do they come from? In the paper, Anarcho-Punk and Resistance in Everyday Life, Kevin Dunn suggests that, quote, many punks use the term anarchism more as a catchphrase to show their punk credibility than to express any affinity to the political philosophies behind it, end quote. In interviews, he found many would self-define the term by saying something like, anarchy to me means. He describes it as, quote, resistance to applying a universal definition of anarchy, thus embracing the subjectivity of any conceptualization of the term, end quote. In The Death and Life of Punk, The Last Subculture, Dylan Clark argues that contemporary post-punk subcultures tends to forego the performances of anarchy associated with the stylistic antagonism of early punk. After the death of punk, that is, its appropriation and commodification by mainstream culture, he argues punk regrouped around the practices of anarchism, choosing to, quote, avoid spectacle-based interactions with dominant culture, end quote. As spaces of practice, punk scenes become what Will Straw describes as, quote, ethical worlds shaped by the working out and maintenance of behavioral protocols, end quote. The efforts to describe punk as subculture or as scene link the community of practice with the spaces of practice. Punk may be thought of in terms of Benedict Anderson's imagined communities with its fluid, temporal, spatial, and cultural boundaries. The rejection of a unified or unifying movement, politics, or identity leaves space for what Dunn describes as, quote, a perpetual process grounded in the praxis of everyday life more than a utopian endpoint created by the political imagination, end quote. Attempts to define punk and other subculture scenes through visible normative categories of identity, on the one hand, or as a subjective and apolitical but ethical practice on the other, risks undermining the radical political potential of these communities, subcultures, and scenes. For many, the punk ethos Practices of anarchism and grassroots DIY approaches are, as Curran Note argues, quote, not just creative practices, but a socio political lifeline for women, queer, people of color, and all those that dominant forces attempt to keep disenfranchised, unproductive, and off scene. End quote. Popular representations of punk as an antagonistic white male youth subculture have frequently coded punk as non-inclusive of women, queer, and BIPOC folk. Internal narratives, identities, and practices in the punk scenes have long been criticized for erasing punk's feminist, queer, and anti-racist presences, legacies, and struggles, and those for whom the personal is deeply political. Invoking lessons from queer activism, Kathy Cohen envisions, quote, a politics where one's relation to power and not some homogenized identity is privileged in determining one's political comrades. A politics where the non-normative and marginal position of punks, bulldaggers, and welfare queens, for example, is the basis for progressive transformative coalition work, end quote. While I agree with Clark's call for the distinction between punk's performances of anarchy and punk practices of anarchism, it is perhaps less a question about when punk shifted from one to the other. Antagonistic performances of anarchy did not die with the death of punk. They remain present and visible in the scene. By shifting from when to by whom, with whom, and for whom, perhaps we more clearly attend to the relation to power and those for whom practices of anarchism, practices of being in community, practices of difference, practices of solidarity, are not only sociopolitical lifelines, 
but also transformative politics and ways of being. Chantal Mouffe argues that radical negativity and the critical dimension of, quote, those who foster the creation of agonistic public spaces consists in making visible what the dominant consensus tends to obscure and obliterate, in giving voice to all those who are silenced within the framework of the existing hegemony, end quote. And while visibility and voice within the existing frameworks have critical dimensions, it does not resolve or remove the oppressive systems of the existing hegemony. Furthermore, MOOF does not speak to the radical dimension of those who foster agonistic practices and antagonistic performances, and the value created beyond the existing hegemony and frameworks, created with and for those who are obscured, obliterated, and silenced. The things not made public, not made visible, that remain unintelligible and underground. As I near the end of my doctoral studies, with all its performances and practices, perhaps I have at least become more comfortable with refusing the question, are you an anarchist? Are you a punk? And refusing to let it get in the way of the work. Before concluding with the final verse of my band, Bad Missionary Song, Out For Me, I'd like to share a reflection on the university and the undercommons by Stefano Harney and Fred Motet. But for the subversive intellectual, all of this goes on upstairs, in polite company among the rational men. After all, the subversive intellectual came under false pretenses, with bad documents, and out of love. Her labor is as necessary as it is unwelcome. The university needs what she bears but cannot bear what she brings. And on top of all that, she disappears. She disappears into the underground, the down-low, low-down maroon community of the university, into the undercommons of enlightenment, where the work gets done where the work gets subverted, where the revolution is still black, still strong. Thank you for listening. To help others find Anarchist Essays, please rate and review us wherever you find your podcasts. And if you're interested in anarchist ideas, why not check out the journal Anarchist Studies? For over 20 years, Anarchist Studies has been publishing original research on the history, theory, and practice of anarchism. For more information, visit www.lwbooks.co.uk forward slash anarchist studies.